Hi, this is Rico Figliolini, host of Peachtree Corner's Life and publisher of Peachtree Corner's Magazine. I thank you for joining us. This is a live Facebook stream with a special guest today of a new restaurant that's going to be coming to the town center here in Peachtree Corners. Not there yet. Long journey. We'll discuss it in a few minutes. Just want to say thank you to Gwinnett Medical for GMC Primary Care for being a sponsor of our podcast and the family of podcasts that we do, including Capitalist Sage and Prime Lunchtime with the City Manager. So I want to thank them and uh, our other sponsors, including Atlanta Tech Park and Prototype Prime, which is part of now Curiosity Lab at Peachtree Corners. So without further ado, let me introduce my guest. And we have Willie. Uh, I should have asked you about the Deagle at the beginning. And we lost your visual. Gotcha. Yeah, people tried there calling you, me. There you go. Yeah. So, All right. So is it Willie Deagle? Deagle? Deagle. D-E-D-E-L. Very simple. Excellent. Willie Deagle. So Willie's our guest today. He's the founder and owner of Uncle Jack's Steakhouse, uh, which is a New York-based um, place. Uh, I think right now you have locations in New York and Georgia, and Duluth, Georgia, actually, is, is the one that I'm familiar with. And you were a former host of the Food Network's Restaurant Steakhouse. Steakhouse. Yes. Steakhouse. Right? Yes. Restaurant cool. Steakhouse. Yes. Steakhouse. That's cool. Um, so, and you're a native of Queens. I'm a native of Brooklyn, New York, to find my way south to Atlanta. Yeah, uh, so we got a little bit in common in New, in New York as far as that stuff goes and in the food of New York, if you will, uh, which was a little difficult to find in 1995 when I moved here because there wasn't good pizza, there wasn't a good deli, and Italian restaurants were few and far between. Now it's gotten much better, and we're seeing a lot more stuff coming down here from yes. uh, from all over the place, not just from, uh, I mean, Korean places, Japanese, uh, place from Chicago, New York, and stuff. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Willie? Give us a little so, background of who you are. You know, I'm a baby of four boys from Flushing, Queens. You know, Catholic. We had to put ourselves through Catholic school. We had newspaper routes. We shoveled snow. My mother was, you know, worked hard. My father worked. He did two jobs. He worked in the post office and was a longshoreman. Uh, my mother worked for secret uh, legal secretary. So my father is still hard work. My mother instilled confidence in us, good work ethic. Being a baby of four boys, my brothers beat me up every day, so <laughs> I have a sense of fearlessness. I'm tough. I'm going to keep coming. I'm never going to give up. I'm never going to quit. Uh, I always had vision. I'm a visual learner. I'm a hands-on person. Okay. I have to be in control of that. I have to be involved in it. It's my personality, and I wouldn't want it any other way. Cool. So what, you know, uh, obviously it seems like it runs in the, in the business a little bit, um, in the family. What, what got you started in food? I mean, you know, I was on a blind date. I always cooked with my father. Well, my father got cancer when I was 10 and he oh. had to retire from one job. He almost died. We made soup for him. We brought him back from death. Uh, and then he would be home two days a week and he would cook. And I would go shopping with him because I was the littlest. I would come home from Catholic school on my bike for lunchtime to see him. He would take me over to the butcher, go get veal cutlet in Ozone Park, go to this place in Queens, Richmond Hill. So he taught me about dealing with people, about giving people tips, about saying hello and working with the average everyday Joe mm. that nobody's better than anyone and my father worked down the piers and he handled a lot of stuff for Queen Elizabeth. And he took right. care of the boats and the chefs and the chefs used to give him gifts. So he used to explain this to me. So my father would set up his mise en place and then he would taught me how to cook and prep. And he was very clean and organized, my father. So am I. And that came from my grandmother. So that gave me the little taste and flavor. Then I was yeah. always an entrepreneur. I went on a blind date. We saw the movie, uh, you know, Cocktails. And Ooh. the girls were like, oh, my God, you should bartend. I wound <laughs> up getting a bartender's job. And the rest is the history. And then I cooked and bartended. I did every position. You know, mm. I run a company now, but I, I built every position, worked every position. Then I try and fill the position and grow the company and build my people. Do you miss any part of that? Do you miss the cooking or the bartending? Do you like miss that feel of that? 
Yeah, like I'm home today. I took off today, Thursday. I work from my phone. I'm making a seven-level layer lasagna with my bachamel. So I'm always cooking. I love it. It's a stress reliever to me. I have to be creative. Uh, I'm working on building new restaurants all the time, working on building people, the corporate infrastructure, uh, the vision, the next five years. So, yes, I miss the interaction of running just one restaurant mm. and me controlling everything yeah. and not depending on so many other people to run my vision. And that's where the growing pains come. And, and that's a you know trial and tribulation process. Now, you've you started modestly, right? You, you opened up a place, um, Bayside Queens, I guess. Yes. My no. first bar restaurant was in Main Street in my neighborhood. All right. And then I opened up the first Uncle Jack's in Bayside on Bell Boulevard in 1996. So wow. it was a cigar bar. It was okay. the first certified Black Angus Steakhouse. Huh. I wasn't Before too... anyone knew what Black Angus even was. That's funny. I don't think it was too far from them. I worked on Bell Boulevard mm. near a nightclub there in Bayside for a, for a while. And uh, a lot of, lot of different, it's a, it was an interesting neighborhood. So did you find success there? Was it, How long, is it still there? Yes, it's still there. We're open 24 years. I own the building. The corporate headquarters is upstairs. I'm in that store yeah. every day. We have the best customers. People come from all over, you know, that have been served there. And that's where we built the legacy. That store, a small box, 50 seats, catering to everyone, giving them what they need, selling the best, executing day in, day out. Hmm. So what? So you, you had that place for a while, and then obviously you decided you wanted to open up another one. So how did that? We served a lot of like developers and politicians, and then Steve, the mayors came there, Giuliani, Bloomberg. So in 19, what is it, about 15 years ago on 9th Avenue and 34th Street, they were going to transform that area with the Jets Stadium. And the developer came to me and said, we want to put an Uncle Jack's in this building. It was a garment building on 9th Avenue and 34th Street. So I went and looked at it. They funded most of the project, half of it. I raised the other half of the money, built it out. Uh, the jet project never went through, but I worked on the Knicks and Madison Square Garden. Then I had Penn Station. Then I had the, wow. you know, the Hammerstein Ballroom. I had about 10 hotels in the area. So again, I built it one customer at a time. Yeah. You know, now it has the Hudson Yards, uh, America's largest, most expensive development ever built two blocks away. I renegotiated, put another 15 years on a lease a year ago with a vision of what was transforming in the neighborhood. So that was my second one. Wow. A lot of, lot of work and a lot of experience getting that done, I'd imagine. Yeah, I mean, it's not easy, you know, starting from the bottom yeah. and being a self toward entrepreneur and coming from a lower middle class family yeah it's never easy nobody wants to give you anything <laughs> you got to go out there and you got to earn it and you got to win people over you got to attack other brands and and understand that why are people going to choose your brand over right. theirs right that makes a lot of sense i mean i I deal with a lot of customers. I do social media marketing and stuff. And it's really, everyone thinks they have a unique uh, business, but you really need to really point out what that uniqueness is, if it's there. Um, so yeah. Well, here's what I say. I live by this motto. What, where, and why? What are you selling? Right. Where is it? And why should they come? Right. Why should they buy it? Right. You know, human nature, listen, we have our senses. We're visual. We uh -huh. smell. We touch. We, you know, we're not, it's not rocket science here. You know, technology makes our life easier. It becomes a convenience. It becomes an organizer. It becomes a director. It becomes, uh, you know, it remembers and tracks and does everything for us and creates laziness. But mm -hmm. you, as a businessman and a businesswoman in today's environment, you still have to keep your simple models. And you must execute your vision and game plan day in, day out to whoever your customer base is. I, you know, and that applies to probably every business that you can think of, right? 
Um, I think so, right? I mean, yeah. it applies to Amazon. It applies to Google. Oh it applies yeah. to Walmart. It applies yeah. to Home Depot, Target. You see their yeah. numbers. They're all coming through incredible, having great sales because everybody's working and the yeah. economy's booming. Yeah. And if you don't, if you stay stagnant and you don't change, you get lost, right? So, I mean. Time today, I always say it, right? Freedom is priceless. Time stands still for no one. People will step right over you. That's right. That's right. That's what's happening to a lot of these places now, right? So Walmart is trying to become an Amazon. Amazon's flying away with stuff, right? I mean, no one goes to stores anymore, it seems. I mean, even friends that I know go to a store maybe to to touch things, to see it, and then they'll go back and buy it online. Or they might actually buy it on Amazon while they're in the store. Yeah. But food's different, I, right? I, what I feel is, listen, 92% of retail is done in small shops or big stores. So how much more of that could be done online? Now, me, I'm very progressive. So I've been shopping on the internet from the day it started. I was creating my own banner ads, but I'm very, I'm a visionary. So I believed in it when everyone was scared of it. So you still will have retail. It's just changing. That's right. And it's evolving. And people today want an experience. So in some sense, I always hated the big malls. Mm. I like a small town. I like a community. I like individual owners working a niche. And a lot of that's come back with these mini energy town centers. Right. And I believe that's the transformation of America again. It's full evolution, just new. Now, you talked about, um, you know, customer is king, but you also talk about experience, experiential, right? Uh, I think one of the locations you opened in Queens had a Roaring 20-style basement bar and lounge. Yeah. It has a hidden speakeasy called Bootlegger Jacks. You have to go through the laboratory bathrooms, and there's a big steel vault door. You have to press this button, and a red light goes off inside. You have to have the password to get in. And then a little metal hatch opens up. You tell the doorman the password, and then you get in, and it transforms you to an early 1900s speakeasy lounge, bordello sense feel, whiskey parlor. You know? unbelievable, unbelievable. That's an experience. Now, how would you get the password? Is that something? The password is based on who you are, who uh-huh. you know, how many times you've come to the restaurant, what are you eating upstairs, are you having a celebration? So it's all done based on networking. So the restaurant, there's a restaurant upstairs. This yes. is the normal Uncle Jack's Steakhouse upstairs. Yeah, there's Uncle Jack's Meat House, the same house. location. So the Uncle Jack's Meat House, it's not a classic style steakhouse like Uncle Jack's Steakhouse. It's more of a new concept where you come to get your meat game on. I'm the steak doctor, so I'm basically a meat expert. I grew up in a German-Irish household eating meat and potatoes my entire life. So... I went shopping with my dad. I understand every aspect of meat. I live for it. I love it. I'm a carnivore. I'm a caveman, uh-huh. right? I love the nutrition. I like working out. It makes me feel strong. Right. So in this meat house concept, it looks like an old meat factory warehouse, but yet it has a level of luxury in the seating, in the materials used. And then we have a great menu mix where you could go there and you can spend anywhere from $20 a person to $100 a person and have four to five different style dining experiences. Hmm. And it all is entertainment based. It's very visualizing. The decor, the atmosphere, the artwork, the graffiti, everything handmade, customized, the way the food is displayed. I designed all these metal plates. We got hanging bacon. We got a, 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 a cookie staircase. We have uh, your meatballs on golf cues. It's very cool. Now, we were talking a little bit be- before we started this show that um, that what you, you know, what you tried to do about a year ago, you're taking over a piece of area that's going to be, now this is going to be a standalone building? No, you're going to be Hold on. part of a building. My door. Hold on. Yeah, you're fine. Put my, little ah. sure. my wife put what, my door. This is what happens when you do live stream. Yeah, it's okay. So, <laughs> Yeah, so P Street Corners, it's three quarters semi-attached building, and next to me is an Xfinity store. 
So we worked a deal with the landlord. So we, we had this affinity store right next to us. And then we have 4,000 square foot inside. And then we have about 2,000 square foot outdoor dining patio space. Some of it covered, some of it not. Nice. So you're going to, so what were you describing before? It's going to be the same look and feel. Yeah. So if someone went to the Duluth location, mm -hmm. it would be similar to that? It's going to be a lot like the Duluth location, but each store is unique for the area. Each menu gets tweaked for the area. So being that we're at Peach Street Corners, we're going to have this special peach compo burger designed just for that area. So little things, we do our research of the area, all okay. the history, who owned the land, who farmed it, what was grown there. So that's all involved in the philosophy and the story and the makeup and the ingredients we use when we'll unveil a new location. So you're, I mean, this, uh, the meat house is actually um, also like a farm to table. Are you local? Yes. Are you going to right. We use as much locally sourced fresh ingredients working direct with farmers, vendors, who makes honey, who makes cheeses, who's raising her own pork, meat, right. sausage, whatever way we can. We try to integrate that as much as possible. Okay. So we're, how far are we along now? Because it looks like you want to open maybe five additional locations or five in total in the Atlanta area. You got one yes. in Duluth. Yeah. Where are you now as far as getting the building, like groundbreaking? You know, when you design things at the level that I'm doing, it takes time. Working with towns today, it's not easy. There's a lot of regulation. There's a lot of red tape. Right. You got to fight through. You have to hire a lot of people. You know, this was a fully brand new building, a brand new restaurant. It's not like a facelift. You're not taking an existing with guts. No right. permits were filed. So there's a lot of different steps you got to go through. But once you pass that process and you get your store open, you know, those battles mean nothing. It's all about education, feeding everyone in the Peachtree community, mm -hmm. building loyal customers, friends, winning them over, making them part of the family, and getting them to love our house. So do you, do you have a timeline of when you think uh, things will happen? Well, wait, the final meeting is on the 27th. We just had unanimous approval on the elevations design. So we figure we're breaking ground in two weeks and we start building the building. You'll see all the fencing wrapped with great okay. visuals of what's to come. And there's a selfie of me on the fence. And if you send in pitches right now, you'll be able to get invited to the grand opening and have dinner with me. So wait, the selfie's on there now? No, That's it's going, the fencing that wraps the job okay. site is right. getting wrapped with this meat house fencing. Okay. And there's a full-size selfie of me, the steak doctor, and we right. want people to take pictures and selfies next to it and send it in. And we're going to pick about 25 of the best photos and different people to come to the grand opening week celebration. Wow, nice. Do you have an estimated time when that might be, that grand opening? Well, we got to figure probably early spring of next year. Early spring, okay. And are you working on any other restaurants or yes. locations? Um, right now I'm talking to other people in Georgia. I'm yeah. looking for the Beltline. I'm looking for other developers to work with me. I'm talking to the Revel right next door, mm -hmm. next to my Duluth store to maybe do a Jack's Tavern or one of my yeah. burger concepts there, or maybe a speakeasy, right? right? So I have the bootlegged Jack's concept. <laughs> I talk to Miami. I'm talking to Orlando. I'm looking in... Virginia and Washington and North Carolina. So I'm going to try and take over the East Coast with this concept. <laughs> Sounds good. And they're all company owned. None of them are franchises. No, they're all individually owned by me. Okay. And I have sh company shares for everyone who works involved in the company, runs my stores. They're all going to get shares and be working partners and owners. That's okay. how we're going to grow the brand. Okay. So you have local partners from Atlanta? Yes. Like my team in Atlanta now... Brian and April and the chef Chris there, they're all getting shares of the company. The opening team of Duluth will get shares of the company. Right. So the chef that you have there now or that you know that will be there, what's his uh, experience? Is he working off? He's obviously working off an existing menu that uh, plus the tweaks to that menu, I'm assuming, with you. Yeah. 
me and my chef work hand in hand. I'm a self-taught chef, so I understand the business. I understand right. what people like and what people need. So my chef is a creative tool, and he has to love and have the passion and be able to work with others and be young and be shape and moldable. So Chris is excellent. He's passionate. He loves food. He listens well. He works well with me. The egos cool. don't. And I always say, like the rich guy Tillman said, shut up and listen. You know, when you have young people looking at you, eyes wide open and realize like you have 35 years of experience doing this. Are you willing to listen and learn yeah. and work with me and build right. a team and teamwork, that's you know, leads to dream work. And that's what we're doing here. We're building a dream and we're changing people's lives where we're taking care of the community. It's very important today to have a place that people could go have a drink, have quality food, fresh, mm -hmm. educated, good staff. It's important. Oh, for sure. And a lot of people are talking about like scratch kitchens. Yeah. I mean, I'm assuming yours is a scratch. Well, that's kitchen. what we do. We call, we make everything from scratch every day. We run a lunch show. We run a dinner show. If you see the new peach tree location, we have this big round tower and I did a private big round custom made table in there to sit 14 people. It's like a corporate event space with all these TVs on the wall for private parties. It's going to really? be mind blowing. So it's going to be its own private room, I guess. Yes. All right, cool. That sounds when great. When you walk in the door, there's going to be all these refrigerators of all the different meats, dry aged and tagged how we're aging them from 35 to 120 days. Also, that visualization you can see from walking around outside the building because they'll be in the window. All the windows and doors open up. I put string lights so it's like a little street appeal in between the buildings. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be really cool. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see the renderings. I know you yeah. said you would share some with us, yes. and we'll be able to put them on our website along with an article about this. So I appreciate that, Willie. No problem. Um, so what's next for Uncle Jack's Beat House then? What's, what's, what, you well, know, we, get Pe we get Peachtree working. I'm working on a lease in Miami, Brick Hill. I'm working on a lease in Orlando. So, you know, to me, I'm going to build one store at a time. The leases, the paperwork, the agreements, the design work, that all takes months. So I'm, me, I'm trying to do that now. And the okay. rest of my te team execute the game plan. Excellent. Right. So the, we've been, you know, this is great. We've been uh, talking to Willie Deagle and uh, about uh, Uncle Jack's Meat House, Steakhouse in New York, but Meat House here in, in the South. And that's what you're expanding out on um, with tweaked menus, especially to the local area. So wh what was that particular one that you mentioned about Peachtree Corners? We're going to do like a peach cobbler burger. It's going to have like a peach jam. It's going to have cheeses that go with it. I don't want to let you know the whole recipe yet, but it's going to be different. We used it in some different things. We did a right. peanut butter burger. So we got a lot of new tweaks for the menu just for the peach tree area. That sounds great. I can't wait to try that. I'm such a, I, I miss New York in, in some ways. I don't miss New York in a lot of ways, but I, what I miss from New York is the food from New York and the yes. experimentation and stuff that goes on in the experience, like you said. I mean, heck, I mean, Coney Island's always an experience, I think, when you go there and check out food. Coney Island's changing. A lot of people developing there. Listen, I grew up yeah. in Queens. I live in Long Island now. Long Island don't have the food like Queens. Queens, you have 177 languages, the largest ethnic groups in anywhere in the world. It's amazing cultural experience. We take all of that. It becomes Americanized. It gets infused. It's the melting pot of the world. But look, I love Georgia. Georgia is clean, neat, organized. The people are nice. Everybody's kind. In New York, this grind is wearing down on everyone. I'm going to turn 52. I got an escape plan. I know where I'm going. I'm out of here in a couple of years as well. <laughs> that's funny. Escape from New York. Yeah. <laughs> that's you what know it that. That's Her what it did. helping me. Yeah. That's what I did in '95. Yeah, mm. <laughs> good luck there. <laughs> we've been with we've been with Willie. I appreciate you uh, being with us, Willie. Um, thank you, and I'm gonna hang in there with me for after I close this out. But I want to thank the Facebook live stream people, my Facebook fans, for showing up for Peace Recorders Live for this show with Willie and talking about the new restaurant that's going to be opening up uh, early spring, hopefully mid spring. 
Uh, that's uh, Uncle Jack's Meat House. Lots of stuff. It sounds so unique. Can't wait to have it. But thank you, guys. I appreciate you being with us. Thank you, Willie. No problem, Rico.